Today we will talk about the magnetic interaction. Magnetic interaction. You know, uh, uh, there is a magnetic alignment like a magnet. Magnet we our daily lives. A magnet is a ferromagnet. Ferromagnet is used in many our mm, uh, uh, our daily lives, like like a refrigerator and a motor or generator, and it is like a ferromagnet. Fer in ferromagnetic materials, then magnetic spin aligned in a uh, in a in a certain direction, which which call it is a ferromagnetic alignment. The same direction, it is a ferromagnet, and. An antiferromagnet is that uh, magnetic moment anti parallel with each other. It is like this. It is antiferromagnet. Ferromagnet is that uh, antiferromagnet in between the antiferromagnet and the ferromagnet, uh, like the like this, and the uh, magnetic interaction is antiferromagnet, but the uh, moment. Total magnet, magnetic moment is different, and the net magnetic moment, net magnetization, and the spin up is more stronger than the spin. And uh, uh, for example, spin up state and uh, spin uh, down state, we call it as a ferry magnet. You know the paramagnetic or diamagnet system, and uh, in the previous lecture. And paramagnet is the random spin orientation, and the diamagnetism is the Lenz, is coming from the Lenz law uh, by applying magnetic field. Uh, therefore, and uh, this kind of what what causes this kind of magnetic interaction, and uh, actually uh, this kind of ferromagnetism and uh, antiferromagnetism is a long range a long range interaction, long range order, and the long range order can be understood by the uh, thermodynamic point of view uh, from the ginzburg landau theory and other statistical mechanics can describe the origin of the uh, long-range magnetic ordering. But in our case, we will look, uh, look closely for the microscopic point of view, what is the magnetic interaction. And the uh, uh, basic magnetic interaction is the uh, exchange interaction. The first one Chapter three. Mm, let's write as a big three, like a chapter three, and this is magnetic interaction. And the first origin of exchange. When I said in conclusion, in the the origin of magnetic interaction is the exchange interaction. And when you could basic idea for the interaction is the magnet dipole interaction. Uh, from the uh, magnetostatics in electricity and magnetism class, you may uh, mm, uh, you may uh, talk you may study it for the magnetic dipole interaction and for example when there is magnetic moment m1 generates magnetic moment m1 and magnetic moment m2 then here the interaction r uh, uh, vector <coughs> then in this case the uh, the magnetic field Generating by the M1 state is is written by the from like that mu zero over four pi in MKS unit minus I cube M1 <coughs> plus I to the five three M1 dot I I it is the uh, it is the result or uh, result from the <coughs> magnetic dipole by uh, generating magnetic field induced by the magnetic dipole then 
from uh, you can see that you can see that from the electricity and magnetism you can remind that uh, a magnetic dipole induced this kind of magnetic field then the energy is that uh, uh, minus m2 dot b which is from the r uh, which is generated from the magnetic moment m1 and therefore the energy energy between the magnetic dipole interaction magnetic dipole interaction energy is that uh, mu0 over 4 pi r cube then m1 dot m2 minus 3 over r square m1 r and m2 dot r Let's suppose that the magnetic moment is about uh, the magnitude is about the one bar magneton, and uh, R is about uh, one Armstrong. In this case, the energy scale, the energy scale is proportional to the mu zero m square over four pi r cube. Then it is when you calculate this one, it is order of 10 to the minus 23 joule, and uh, in temperature, it is about the one Kelvin. One Kelvin is very low temperature, low energy, because uh, in conventional ferromagnetism like uh, iron, cobalt, and nickel, the Curie temperature is about uh, 1,000 Kelvin. For example, ordering temperature. Ordering temperature is about 1000 Kelvin or more in some materials and therefore 1 Kelvin is very small and uh, therefore it is magnetic interaction is too weak. Magnetic interaction is too weak to form uh, magnetic ordering. When we consider only for dipole dipole interaction uh, with respect to magnetic dipole dipole interaction, therefore it is that uh, we can understand that uh, dipole-dipole interaction is not sufficient to describe the strong magnetic interaction. And uh, what is the origin of the magnetic interaction? This is first. Magnet-dipole interaction is not, cannot, take, uh, cannot describe the strong uh, magnetic ordering. Therefore, and uh, the origin of the mm, uh, magnetic interaction is the exchange interaction. It is coming from the Heisenberg model. It is exchange interaction. Heisenberg, Heisenberg introduced the exchange interaction concept and it is well described for the origin of the magnetism. And from well, therefore, uh, basically, uh, the, the magnetism is, is one of the one of the subject to study for, for a long time and uh, from the BC, uh, before Christ, and uh, magnet, uh, it is well known the magnet, uh, magnetic properties, and also magnetism is one of the very long studying, uh, long studied physics. Uh, but uh, the uh, fundamental understanding is coming from the uh, from the quantum mechanics, because uh, magnetic magnetic uh, phenomena itself is a quantum mechanical phenomena, therefore. Uh, by from the birth of quantum mechanics, uh, developed by the Heisenberg, Schrödinger, Dirac, and other many genius uh, physicists, and uh, the quantum from the quantum mechanics, the magnetism can be described by very well. Therefore, in order to understand the magnetic properties, we should uh, we should understand the quantum mechanics at first. 
Now, therefore, in this case, let's consider for the two electrons. One is one electrons is in the from the origin, is origin O, and is R one, uh, uh, R one vector, and uh, the other electrons is in the R two vector. Here is the uh, consider two electrons at R one and R2, R2. Uh, in the case of first electron, uh, we call um, electron. First electron is that uh, the quantum A state. is in the A state at the R1 position. And the second electron, let's suppose that it is uh, B state B, uh, at the R2 position. Uh, the wave function of the to describe the two electrons is the product of two wave function. Product of two wave function is that psi a r one and the psi b r two. But uh, in principle. Electrons are indistinguishable, and uh, nobody can distinguish the electrons, and the electrons are same with each other, and the, the allowed state are product of two wave functions, and also in this case we can, uh, because in quantum mechanics there is uh, uh, quantum states, quantum state is the basic concept is the entanglement, whether uh, overlap, orbital overlap, therefore we, sh we can consider for the orbital overlap, for two uh, two cases, one is that uh, symmetric orbital overlap. Symmetric orbital orbital overlap is that uh, this is one of, one of a square root two is the normalization factor, and uh, psi a r one and psi b r two. Then because uh, r one electrons at r one and elect the other electrons at r two are identical with each other. Therefore, we can also think that the uh, R, psi a r two and uh, psi b r one state. This is a uh, orbital in the spatial part. In the spatial part orbital, spatial part product of the wave function, and the uh, spin part should consider. And anyway, it is a symmetric, and uh, uh, it is a symmetric wave function. Why is symmetric? And uh, in this case, uh, the electrons at R1 has the quantum state A. The electron, the other electrons at R2 has a quantum state B. But uh, when you exchange two electrons, and uh, uh, electrons at R2 has a A state, and the electrons at R1 has a B state, it is uh, exchange with each other. And uh, if we change exchange, then the, the sign does not change. No, we can we can say that it is uh, symmetric by with respect to the uh, changing of two electrons. It is a uh, symmetric, but in Pauli uh, exclusion principle, Pauli exclusion principle, it means that the total wave function should be anti-symmetric, and uh, it is a result of quantum mechanics. And uh, Pauli exclusion principle does not allow allow two electrons can occupy. Uh, in a single quantum state for two uh, for the same uh, spin state, therefore, when you consider spin state, the the total wave function should be anti-symmetric. Because the special part wave function is symmetric, the spin part wave function should be an, uh, anti-symmetric. Uh, we call it is uh, uh, S means that it is not it is a singular state, not a symmetric, and the spin part. Is uh, anti-symmetric, anti-symmetric wave function. It is a spin part. And the symmetric part is a spatial part. And the total wave function is the anti-symmetric, and therefore it is we call we can, we can say that it is a singular state.
We already say that the we already say that the singular state and the triplet state, and the, we can uh, describe later in more detail. And anyway, then the, this is a symmetric a wave function, a singlet, singlet, uh, uh, symmetric special wave function, and anti-symmetric uh, spin wave function. Anti-symmetric means the spin up down state. Spin up down is anti-symmetric. And also, it is a total wave function has a singlet state. And the triplet state wave function is that uh, uh, like a anti-symmetric combination. One over the square root two is a normalization factor, and psi a r one at psi b r two, uh, and um, not plus but minus psi a r two psi b r one. Here in this case, when we replace two electrons at uh, r one and r two, the sign is becomes a negative. A total the special part wave function, the sign becomes negative, now therefore it is anti-symmetric. And the special part wave function shows the anti-symmetric. Therefore, in the spin part wave function should have the symmetric wave function. We call it a triplet state. It is a symmetric. Symmetry means that the uh, spin, uh, there is an eigenstate, is the spin eigenstate is that the plus down up state. It is, a, it is a singular state, singular state wave function in spin state. And the triplet state is that uh, there are three possible configurations. One is that the up up state and the down down state. In up down minus down up state. It is a triplet state. It is a symmetric symmetric wave function. Uh, I'm sorry. It is a minus, but it is plus. Yeah, there are three possible uh, spin uh, spin configuration. Therefore, it is a sp symmetric. Uh, spin wave spin wave function. Therefore, we can say that it is a triplet state. <coughs> Therefore, the, the energies can be calculated like this. The symmetric eigenstate is that uh, for the volume integration. Volume integration for dr1 and dr2, and uh, symmetric wave function, total wave function is uh, Hamiltonian. We do not know the exact Hamiltonian, but they may have the Hamiltonian. Uh, this is a symmetric. <coughs> uh, it is a single state, <coughs> single state energy, and the triplet state energy is that uh, for volume integration. And also, wave function is have the triplet state, uh, not singlet but triplet, triplet state. Uh, therefore, it is uh, spin parts are normalized here, and therefore we do not con we cannot consider uh, for the spin part. Let's assume that. Spin parts of psi are normalized. Then uh, we can say that there is energy difference. The energy difference, the single state energy minus triple state energy, is that. Mm, here and singular state energy because the normalization factor is one over one over square root two, 
and the uh, two products of two wave function is that uh, one of one half integral for dr1 dr2 and the uh, uh, symmetric wave function is that psi a r1 star psi b r2 star plus psi a r2 star psi b r2 star this is uh, psi s star in the Hamiltonian they multiply psi a r1 psi b r2 plus psi a r2 psi b r1 I'm sorry, this I1. It is a single state, a single state energy, and the triple state energy is that the minus one half integral dr1 dr2, and the triple state is that psi a r1 star psi b r2 star minus psi a r2 star psi b r1 star and Hamiltonian mm, is a little bit tricky and anyway let's copy Mm. Anyway, multiply and erase this star. Yeah, okay, and multiply. It is, uh, it is the triple state energy. Uh, therefore, when we summarize this calculation. And also, uh, it is very tedious. In the one half, but uh, there are two two terms. What terms? It is that dr one, dr two, and psi a r one star, psi b r two star. Hamiltonian psi a r two. Psi b r1 and also plus like that one half and uh, there are two terms dr1 dr2 psi a r2 star and psi b r1 star Hamiltonian psi a r1 psi b r2 then the other term can be cancelled with each other and therefore when you summarize this and anyway and uh, psi a r1 and psi b r2 psi a r2 psi b r1 it is a symmetric and therefore we can write down it is a 2 integral psi a r1 star Psi b r2 star Hamiltonian Psi a r2 Psi b r1 uh, dr1 dr2 uh, It is a volume integration Therefore it is not zero and uh, it can be positive or negative It is energy difference between the single state and the triple state and uh, you know that uh, from the previous uh, previous lecture we saw that total spin is that the uh, square is that a s a square plus s b uh, s b square s b square plus two s a dot s b uh, because and uh, it is that uh, total in the quantum mechanical 
uh, state is uh, S and S plus 1 and therefore it is that S A dot S B if the spin is the parallel whether and parallel each other the total spin is 1 in this case up up state or the down down state it is s equal to 1 s equal to 1 case then we can say that we can calculate that uh, mm, it is that 1 fourth yeah 1 fourth uh, because and here and uh, uh, s total square psi equal to in the four third for spin one spin is the one half one half therefore psi plus psi plus two S A dot S B psi and therefore in the for total spin one case total spin one case it is that uh, two uh, therefore it is about uh, S A dot um, two third um, S A dot S B is that one half and uh, two minus two third is that hmm. okay it is a one fourth now in the case of zero s equal to zero s equal to spin single state up and down and it is a zero zero case let's assume that it is a zero then it is that uh, uh, minus minus three fourth in a singular state. Therefore, in the three plus state, three plus state energy is that uh, uh, if uh, a fourth in this case minus three fourth a. Therefore, the energy different. There is an energy difference. In this case, the single state is more preferable in this case also. And uh, therefore, we can define that exchange integral. Define the exchange integral. We can define the exchange integral like this. And the J is that uh, Es minus Et over 2 and uh, 2 means that uh, exchange exchange uh, consider for 2 electrons therefore we divide by the 2 and here in, in this case the R1 the R2 and the Psi A R1 star Psi B R2 star Hamiltonian Psi A, R2, Psi B, R1. It is a definition of the exchange integral. And the uh, effective Hamiltonian, in this case, effective home Hamiltonian is that uh, one fourth the single energy plus three triplet energy and uh, minus E S minus E T S one dot S two uh, it is uh, effective Hamiltonian and also spin Hamiltonian spin Hamiltonian is defined that uh, minus two J S one dot S two it is uh, Hamiltonian for Heisenberg model it is uh, it is a two only two spin interaction and therefore uh, in here if the J equal positive J equal positive positive case because 
J, J is that the uh, ES minus ET. Uh, therefore, the positive J means that the single less state energy more, more higher than the triple state energy. Therefore, it is that uh, uh, it favors the triple state. Therefore, total electro, uh, spin, total spin, one is favored. And uh, if the J is negative, J is negative case, and the uh, single state energy is lower than the triple state energy, therefore it is a single state. Single state and uh, total spin zero is favored. In many, uh, many spin interaction, many body spin interaction case, we call it Heisenberg model. In the Heisenberg model, there is many body spin interaction. Uh, here, the Hamiltonian is that uh, minus summation for Ij. Ij means that this uh, only do, does not take on, into account for the i is not equal to j and uh, one half. It is a summation. It means that uh, it means that uh, summation i is not equal to j and one half. One half is coming from the uh, to avoid uh, double counting because one and two and two and one. Interaction is same, but we should cons we should uh, avoid double counting. And here it is uh, J I in uh, in brief. We can write down summation uh, I J. Therefore J I J um, S I dot S J. We call it, it is that it is the Heisenberg model. It is Heisenberg Hamiltonian. Therefore, Heisenberg Hamiltonian case, the sign of J is very important. And the sign of J, J I J is called exchange constant. Exchange constant between ith and J spins. Yeah. Therefore, if two electrons are on the same atom, then J equal positive, and uh, triple state in this case, and uh, uh, spin up state for uh, for positive J, it is a uh, triple state, it is a uh, spin symmetric, and the spin symmetric means that uh, anti symmetric anti bonding, and uh, here. Uh, a Pauli exclusion principle Pauli ex exclusion principle is that uh, for spin uh, j equal to j uh, positive then the spin triplet state triplet state is that the symmetric uh, symmetric spin Symmetric spin means that uh, the wave function should have the anti-symmetric anti, uh, anti Anti-symmetric bonding means is that anti-bonding Anti-bonding case the orbital um, if it is zero, uh, um, zero state and the orbital may have one one psi it is a anti bonding state it is anti bonding state bonding state is that It is a bonding state. Two orbitals. 
two orbitals bonding. In the bonding state, the uh, spin has the singular state for the spin up down. Singular, singular state in the anti bonding state is uh, spin triplet state. Now, therefore, in the anti uh, for for a symmetric spin should have the anti bonding anti bonding state do not favor to overlap orbital overlap do not do not favor the orbital overlap therefore it is a exponentially exclusion principle it is reasonable to describe the pi Pauli exclusion principle also and also from now on let's take into account the various exchange interaction.